Hello Libra. Welcome to the Plaid Sheep Oracle. We're in a slightly different configuration here because I went out for a walk and came back to find Jupiter the cat asleep in my chair. Um, but it is also appropriate that it should be so for your reading. For this round, I've been pulling a card from my Divining Poets, Emily Dickinson edition. And I've been a little interested to see um, that often, you know, when something comes up in the deck for me that I'm, I can feel that I'm meant to disagree with it. Uh, she did have uh, I would say a pessimistic outlook <laughs> in many ways. I mean, there are some, some really lovely ideas through the deck, but then there's, there's also some grim stuff as well as this card, yours, which is a little, is right. There's some resistance in it. So the card says, Luck is not chance, it's toil. Fortune's expensive smile is earned. And I want to say that that's not true, necessarily. Um, right? It has, it has a very resistant idea, the idea that Right, that involves toil, which has this really pejorative, uh, heavy idea. Um, you know, not that you might be, you know, doing lots of things, that there might be lots of time that you invest in something, but that it could have a much lighter quality than toil which feels like, you know, what you do when, um, when you've been, you know, sentenced to hard labor somewhere. So I want to say that there, there is, there are things that one needs to do that are in a way required for good fortune but that seeing them as toil, as hard labor, uh, is a resistant idea. And that you are about to have an opportunity, Libra, to perhaps break free of this notion. So we start with the Ace of Fungi, the Ace of Pentacles. And at the bottom of the deck, we have this Hermit. And what I immediately saw was the sun moving into Libra, coming out of Virgo and moving into Libra. And this was confirmed by the card under the Ace of Pentacles, which is the Queen of Aether, the Queen of Air. She is your court card, traditionally. So moving, and also below that is the Ace of Air. Now on this day, which is September 22nd, the equinox date, the sun will move into Libra and Venus, who is your guide, is going to perfect a square to Pluto. From the very last, the anoretic degree of Libra, the most Libra-ish <laughs> degree. While Pluto sits in the Capricorniest 29th degree. And he's still moving uh, retrograde. When this happens, he has another month or so of, of retrograde movement. 
just moving, you know, arc minutes in that month. Now the, if you're, if maybe times or exact numbers interest you, uh, she, uh, rather the sun moves into Libra at 8.43 a.m. Uh, Eastern U.S. time on the morning of the 22nd. And then Venus will perfect her square to Pluto at about 5.15 p.m. So about eight and a half hours later. And that, that square, because she trined Pluto when she entered Libra. And now she's going to square him as the sun enters Libra. So the beginning of your season has this strong square. And she is... We, we could say that she is the dominant energy of the square because she's at home in Libra and Pluto is in Capricorn and Capricorn's ruling or guiding planet Saturn is in Pisces where Venus is exalted. So there's a lot of Venusian, uh, Piscean kind of energy in this aspect, in these, in this meeting of these two. And also Capricorn is an, an earth sign. Uh, I think Venus, um, I think people are very comfortable with Venus in Capricorn. In many ways. So the opportunity the next two cards, we have this Six of Tentacles, which is right the past childhood stuff that may have happened to you when you were there. But then this is followed by this um, Knight of Tentacles, Knight of Cups. And I want to say that here he is Saturn in Pisces. And also he is um, you know, growing up, but not growing up in the way that we, that many of us did in a kind of rigid environment. Um, he's the ability to grow up, uh, and be fluid, grow up and be romantic, grow up and be uh, filled with a, a loving energy, an energy of imagination. Um, an energy of unity, of, uh, you know, seeing, right? Seeing all of humanity as one. And then we have the Empress, Venus. Really, really coming into that Venusian energy. In your own mind, understanding, uh, you know, that it's not really about toil, right? It's not about hard work. Uh, it's not about towing the line or uh, doing all the things or, you know, being virtuous. And so then we have this six of Pentacles, which right shows is showing some hard labor going on. But somebody is attempting to convince you that you don't need to stick around for that. And I often see this cave that you're being directed to by the person in yellow as, you know, sort of a deep dive or a, um, you know, a shadowy quest. But here I feel as if it's just a passageway that it's just a short little tunnel that you can go through to the other side. 
to exist in a completely different world. And all you have to do is walk away from this idea that things have to be hard work. So we have the Keeper of Time, certainly very Saturn, who is Kronos, the Lord of Time. But, you know, she's decked out in flowers. Um, not time as the enemy or time as um, a taskmaster, you know, having to do X number of hours of something or having to, you know, meet every single deadline or achieve something by X date. You know, I need to be a millionaire by 35. She is more fluid than that, the keeper of time. And to uh, emphasize that, the bottom of the deck has the keeper of waves. So this watery energy. Uh, Venus was just in opposition to Neptune. They had a, you know, I think they had a long talk, a long discussion about, you know, the advantages of that watery outlook of the combination of earth and water. And so you do have risk, the willingness to take a risk, to do things differently, to make different choices. to go against whatever the prevailing uh, paradigm or zeitgeist is. I was also reminded uh, yesterday, actually, um, by something I read on a Substack. I don't go to Substack very often. I, I avoid it because generally I just run into things that kind of make my mind spin off in a, uh, a direction I don't really want it to go. But, um, I think I was there to sort of read this um, that was kind of about the, the nihilism, you know, that uh, the lack of meaning that a certain segment of, of the population, uh, particularly here in the United States, has. Now, I certainly don't think it's everybody. I think that there are, right, there's spaces where this dominates. And the online space is one of them. Uh, so it may be a risk to embrace a really optimistic perspective. To uh, decide that, you know, it isn't about hard work. That it's about love of something. Um, it's about enthusiasm and optimism and... Uh, you know, working towards a particular vision. And so we have imagination. And this, this is very important. It repeats in a moment. Um, we have this healing image and this too uh, makes me think of this Venus Neptune opposition. You know, Venus participating in this kind of healing energy. Because Neptune, particularly Neptune in, in sitting in Pisces, uh, you know, I think is about meaning. So finding right, what you value, Venus is what, not just what you love, but what you value. Um, what you want around you, what you want to see every day, how you want to feel every day, right? And what you don't want is what's right below it, which is the Four of Cups. 
apathy, boredom, a sense of hopelessness or despair. The bottom of this deck is the hanged woman. Right, the alternative you. Um, and Pisces energy again. And then we have imagine. I think that speaks for itself. And then the moon, which is kind of a, a, a repeated thing, except that it's specifically imagination about how you feel. Maybe you've been feeling a particular way for a long time. That you need to use your imagination to access other feelings. You know, imagine, what would it be like to feel joy on a daily basis? To feel inspired? To wake up in the morning and feel eager for the day to begin. To feel optimistic. You might need to imagine this initially if you haven't really felt it consistently in a long time. And the upshot of this is, right, this ten of pentacles, which is always about breaking out of the established order for me, right? Because you've, right, you've taken off the mask and you're climbing out. Climbing out of the established order. Out of this very rigid, corseted um, construction. And then into that. This is one of my favorite cards in this deck. This lightness. This not envisioning toil. Um, not envisioning darkness. Uh, as Emily did. Right, she saw a lot of negatives. And I think, you know, I think it, it I've, I've never really been drawn to her poems particularly. Uh, but I, you know, I felt this draw to, to buy her deck as opposed to um, the other ones are Yates and Rumi. Oh, and I can't remember the fourth. It's a, a woman poet. Um, And I think people are drawn to her poetry because um, they feel seen by it. Because they have all these same feelings that Emily has. And that can be really, it can be validating and can feel really good to, to say, oh yes, right, somebody understands. But to validate that, to say, you know, yes, it's fine to feel this way. Um, or to, to, um, to support, I should say, feeling this way. Is resistance. If what you're really looking for is to feel differently, then you kind of have to be willing to feel uncomfortable. That's actually really the work in many ways, is the willingness to be really uncomfortable. Because you've probably experienced that when you've been feeling down about something and you run into somebody who's really cheerful. You just want to punch them in the nose. <laughs> because they make you feel uncomfortable. It's this, right? These energies that don't 
work together. It makes you feel bad. So you seek out other people, right? Misery loves company. But if you stay too long in that, if you marinate in it, it makes it much more difficult to find that other feeling. So we have here the tan of fire. It's enough. And below this, we have the source of air who is sits in the queen position in this deck. So this queen of aether, this um, uplifting Libra energy. The uplifting energy of air, of imagination, of possibility, of change. And actually below that, we have the lovers. And I'm going to go one more. The nine of cups. The bottom is the three of cups. And that feels like, like friendship and celebration. It may be one of the ways to really take advantage of the energy that's coming is to get together with friends and to do it not to have a bitch fest, uh, but to, to intentionally get together to have an uplifting experience to intentionally get together to have fun. I mean, it doesn't have to have like some sort of deep spiritual meaning, but you're gonna get together and you're gonna have some fun. You're gonna talk about, you know, interesting, fun things, not whatever the latest doom news is. Um, maybe you're all gonna talk about, uh, you know, something that you're looking forward to. or something you know, that you've found really fun, or something that you're curious about. Finding ways to, to be celebratory. And it may be that this reading is coming out now, pretty far in advance, almost two weeks in advance of this shift, this, or this, uh, Venus Pluto aspect is so that you have some time that you have some time to think about it maybe to use your imagination to um, to schedule some things for yourself whether it's with friends or you know just with your your partner or even just yourself that maybe you're going to take yourself on some artist dates uh, if you know about that, that's a Julia Cameron artist's way idea that you take yourself on an artist date where you go and do something that, that uh, you know, feeds that inner artist, whether, you're, whether you engage, you know, in formal art or not, that it engages that inner artist aspect, the one that um, certainly if you, you know, as Libra, Libra is very interested in art and beauty. You know, so it might be, it might be going to an art supply store or a museum. Um, it might be going clothes shopping, perhaps, you know, you don't have to buy anything, just going and trying a bunch of things on. It might be uh, going to a beautiful place in nature. It might be, uh, you know, deciding to cook something really that you know, you've never cooked before and, and going and, and really enjoying finding all the different ingredients. Maybe it's going to a neighborhood that you either have never been in or haven't been in in a long time and just walking around and seeing what's there and, you know, what are people's gardens doing? Um, there's so many, right, so many ways. Um, it might be going to a music store and listening to a bunch of different things. Or going to a concert. 
So the artist's date. Um, and in Julia's mind, they're, they're meant to be done alone, but you could, you know, do it with a like-minded friend. Maybe arrange some dinner dates. Meeting people for drinks after work. Whatever it is, right? You've got some time to sort of prep for this, this moment. And then we have this Four of Cups with this scorpion that's about to break free, right? They're being held by this, this thing. And, you know, moving forward, they're going to break free of that. And we know that they will, that you will, because then we get judgment. The breakthrough, the change, the shift. And then this nine of wands, which, you know, doesn't feel like the end of the road as the nine of wands often does, but as a kind of really big inspiration. It's not just the ace of wands, there's a whole nine wands here that are right, gonna catch your attention, that will uh, inspire you. And then we end with this lovely little student of earth. This is new, this is a learning but it's, it's an excited learning. This is fun. Uh, this is a joyous expansion. This is joyous rebirth. I wanna say, you know, it's a bit like being able to go back and be a kid, but knowing you know, keeping the wisdom that you've gained through your life. Advice. Well, we have the Eight of Swords. <laughs> so recognizing, right, that you're this figure here, that you're free. It's only in your mind, in this reflection, that you're caught up. And the bottom of the deck has death, Pluto himself, with this vista, right, within him, this new vista, this new landscape. And then the Six of Swords, getting in the boat and going. The Three of Wands, um, the optimistic outlook, um, the use of imagination, and then the Tower, uh, which is not so much, well, I mean, it is advice in the sense of um, allowing the Tower to happen, allowing uh, the inspiration to strike. And when it strikes, to follow it. Now, then we have an interesting card, which is this Five of Swords. Um, you know, which normally, right, it seems like he's got a headache or a migraine, it's going on, he's got stuff going on in his head. But here is this little dude behind who's free. So allowing your mind to change, allowing yourself or, or being willing to be uncomfortable for a period of time, because there's gonna be dissonance in this. As you move from being this person with the headache to being this person who's running free, So allowing the discomfort not 
um, distracting yourself out of it, not, you know, moving away from it when it comes. Um, you know, if you meet somebody who's really joyous and there's an initial kind of, oh, I must leave. Or make them leave. To, you know, to, to, to stay, to sit with the discomfort, to, to maybe see if you can turn your ship in their direction, even just a little bit. I mean, there is, right, this, this reading is all about the breakthrough, right? This, the Ace of Fungi, this Knight of Pentacles riding in this kaleidoscope, um, judgment, and the tower. And you have this time a little time to prepare. Um, actually, under this Keeper of Time card is prepare. And below that is um, the Keeper of Stories. So right, telling a different story, using your imagination to tell a different story, to support this breakthrough. And you have this time, if you watch it when I post it, and actually, maybe you will always have time. Maybe there's some other transit. If you're watching this a year from now or six months from now, maybe there's a, a transit in your own chart that is a couple weeks away that's going to open this up for you. And so you have time, Libra. Use it. I wish you the very, very best, Libra. And I will see you next time. So long.